that one right there. there there's no button there. there there's no button there over there oh, oh now there is a button over there yeah hit that one. Oh, hit that one sounds like the right button it was Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 110 for Thursday, the 12th of January, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm still not able to get that damn intro right. <laughs> I'm Amos, that's Kent, and tonight we have one and only, the one and only, or a one and only, I don't know. See, I can't even get your get, get your intro right. <laughs> <laughs> standard, standard. We yeah. have Jason Murphy. There we What's go. up? <laughs> Thanks for having me, fellas. Hi. Glad um, to be here. Yeah, this is awesome, dude. I've I've really been wanting to have you on for quite a while, and we reached out to you a few weeks ago, and you said, "Hell yeah, let's do it." And yeah, awesome. There, there's I got to a- tell you, I got, I'm I'm sorry about the butterfly. I just this is a trainer. <laughs> this is not a real knife, and so. It Spread- becomes, uh, I apologize because people are probably watching going, what's happening? Why does he have a knife? Does he think he's cool? No, this is like, it's a trainer. It's not going to hurt anybody. And it, it's it's sitting here on my desk. And so whenever I'm on a podcast or on the phone or something, I just end up sitting here just doing this, you know, over and over. It's basically like if I had a pen and I was chewing on it. Yeah, yeah, see? So I'm just sitting here playing with it. I don't think like, I'm going to have this butterfly knife in this podcast so everyone knows I'm a man. Uh <laughs> Uh, although, anyway, uh, although it's, it's, not, it's, it's not hurting, we, though, you, you know, know, it's, it, you know, I mean, it, it's, this is me asserting dominance. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. well, okay. Then. Well, um, you should just, start, just start, yeah, just start asking <laughs> questions. <laughs> so, uh, Betty or Veronica? Ooh, that is a tough one. I, you know, I can, can I say both? Can I? Can I say neither? <laughs> well, oh, you can say neither. That's totally fair. If you're more of a Jughead kind of guy or an Archie kind of guy, I'm just saying they're they're both kind of kind of. Actually, you know what? Didn't they didn't they just say that Jughead is gay? Like in Did the, they? the like in the current series of of Archie. I didn't know that. Hmm. I, I think so because they they modernized it. Yeah, modernized. The comic, like a, I don't know, a year or two ago, it's like completely, like refreshed, and yeah, they added a lot of different, uh, you know, character arcs and whatnot. I think, yeah, I don't know if it was Jughead, but it was one of the characters. I'm pretty sure is gay. Uh, well, they they said Kevin, this guy named Kevin was. I don't know a lot about Archie. I've been reading uh, Afterlife with Archie, which is amazing, and yeah. uh, it's all it's like zombie apocalypse breaks out in Riverdale. Uh. I, oh I'm my. not making that up. <laughs> no, believe it. I have a comic. The Punisher went to Riverdale. Yeah, yeah. The, you read that one? Uh, that yes. Amazing. The, there was a, a criminal that looks a lot like Archie, and he goes to Riverdale tracking this guy down, and it was the weirdest mix match. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just read it not too long ago again. Uh, they actually um, – no, in Afterlife with Archie – what happens is uh, in the first issue, Jughead's dog, Hot Dog, gets hit by a car, and he's just forlorn. And it's really dark. I mean, it's all the way dark. Uh, he's forlorn, and and so it's a uh, Francesco Francavilla does the art, so the art's beautiful. Uh, Jughead takes his dog to Sabrina to resurrect the dog, oh, the teenage witch. <laughs> Yeah, and she does. I'm not making this up. She does at using the Necronomicon, oh and so the dog comes back like all pet cemetery, right? Bites Jughead. Jughead becomes a zombie. Zombie apocalypse. Oh Jeez. my god! Yeah, it's crazy. It's so good. I got a copy over here somewhere. That doesn't matter. Whatever. It's it's, it's over there somewhere. Yeah, Tom Merritt, you are not. Yeah, <laughs> Tom just would be like, "Oh, here it is." And, 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 <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, no. that, that that exact uh, that exact episode right there, boom. Um, and for the record, uh, it's it's not for Jughead; it's it's for Valerie. So just just a taste oh. difference. I don't know. I don't know who that is. So yeah. take your word for it. Is, is this? Is, did you you have like an imaginary girlfriend who lives in the Niagara Falls equivalent of the Archie universe? No, no, no. Like, she, she's actually part of the Archie universe. She's she's the brown girl. Okay, right yeah. on. So, uh, 
<laughs> that Valerie? Yeah. Valerie Archie Comics. I'm looking I'm looking her up right now to make sure she's real. Oh, yeah. She's Foxy. See? Yeah. No, she's in the new uh the new series. She's one of the main characters in the new series. Uh uh, uh what is it? River is it Riverdale? River yeah. I think, I, so. I think it's called Riverdale. It's on the CW. And if you watch the trailer, it looks like the most CW thing that has ever happened. <laughs> really? It looks like they took CW and distilled it into an element and then made an entire TV show out of it. Oh, great. <laughs> now I have to see it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm one of those guys, like, I will sit here and say that CW is garbage, all the shows suck, but let one come on TV. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Like <laughs> you're 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 wrong actually because <laughs> supernatural, my friend. Oh, I forgot about supernatural. Oh, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I've got teenage daughters what? and they, they 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 watch all the shittiest shows. So anytime <laughs> anytime they watch any show at all that I haven't already seen and decided that is good, I immediately put up this mask and it's just like that's crap. I don't care Supernatural it, is else. so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'm, I'm just happy. I mean, there's they... a reason it's been going for like 12 seasons or something it, like that. It, it just makes me happy when they finally start watching a show that I've been watching because now I've already decided that it's good or bad. And the good ones, I can sit down and watch it with them and watch their expressions. But then, I mean, the, these, these little ladies can't watch Firefly because they think it's boring. Oh, see... I... Yeah, you know, I don't. That ain't right. I don't know what to do that with that. Be like a generational thing or something. I, I you know, I, I don't know. I don't, like like yeah. the world's consensus is that Firefly is the best show that almost was. Uh, you say it's a generational thing. I say it's a, a adoption thing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. guess what? I've, I'm not your dad. <laughs> yes, you are. Not anymore. It's, <laughs> it's been considered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You're either a brown coat or you're on the street. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, yeah. and that's kind of that's kind of how I feel too. So, um, how has your week been? Let's get to the let's uh, get to the top of the podcast here. Now that we're ten minutes in or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I. That's me. That's all on me. I derailed it with butterfly uh, knives. Yeah. And Firefly. Yeah. CW and Archie. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, who's me? How's my week been? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The yeah. guest. Anything, you know. my, anything new and cool <laughs> going on with you? My week is blood and fire. Uh, it's like every week. It's it, no, it's just it's it's constant work. Um, yeah, I, I work like all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but this week, what's been keeping me the most busy, uh, or the busiest, is uh, Modern Rogue prepping because we're shooting some stuff this weekend. And so I've been trying to get all of the uh, supplies Consult. together and yeah, testing yeah. out some of the stuff before we actually get in there and do it. And so we're, we're doing like eight or nine episodes this weekend. Oh, gee. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how I prefer to do it because then it's like we shoot for one weekend and then I get two months off. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, yeah it's no, been that, a that's lot. Got, that. That's got to be a complete pain in the ass for the uh, for whoever's editing the videos, though, right? Oh, I mean, Grant, fuck him. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's oh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, there's like, that got a wag. Yeah, there, yeah. There's no oh, there's no retakes or anything else. Like, if he finds something in post and it's just oh well, that's that's gone now. That that, that was four weeks ago that we filmed that. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Is it, yeah, that that that, uh, that that occasionally happens. <laughs> Hey, Sometimes. Jason, is it possible to get a sneak peek of um, an episode, like a future episode? Is there anything that you could uh, uh, like tell you or? Yeah. yeah. You want me to sh hang on here. I'll just show you. Um, no. Just go ahead and put those in he's, the Dropbox. He's, he's, he's just going to yeah. go ahead and he's going to uh, he's going to go ahead and just shoot it right now. So we can watch uh, it live. I'm trying to <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. Um, let's see. Oh, if you check my Instagram. Oh, you check my Instagram, that will give you a good hint. The last picture I posted, I think, uh, that will give you a good hint at what's coming up. I don't want to say what's coming up because it could just go completely afoul <laughs> and like just not work because that happens sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, 
we'll see if uh, if you can see. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that is some high kick in there, buddy. Yeah, that's the one that actually goes up tomorrow. Nice, excellent. That excellent. episode goes up tomorrow. Uh, for the stuff that um, for the stuff we're shooting this weekend, there's uh, there's some science involved. There's some uh, weaponry. Some weaponry we're making. Uh, we're dealing with chemicals. Uh, more more weaponry. Um, and then some stuff you should know type stuff. We're doing a couple of episodes uh, of that. The stuff you should know, kind of like the Max Headroom hacking episode, if you guys saw that one, um, or the, the sequel injection, you know, like uh, stuff like that. Like, here's how this works. Um, you, you know, well, until you yeah. until you got to the Max Headroom part, all of that could have been described just by um, or uh, applied to properly cooking a steak. Like all, of the, like that's how yeah. innocuous that was. Like there, you didn't give us anything. Ah, uh, all right, okay, all right. I'm not trying to pressure you into into no, more. It's just so as as you were running down the list, I was like, uh, yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna properly cook no, a steak well, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's just opportunity for Brian to get hurt. Uh, he did that on his own entirely, though. That's entirely possible. There's some. <laughs> there are a couple of episodes where. It's gonna get a little dodgy as far as safety goes. So, <laughs> I wouldn't expect yeah. any less. Are, are, are these okay. the uh, the episodes where Bonnie's like not in the garage? Not yeah, in the garage. Um, <laughs> go over there. Yeah, you're, you're, actually, you're there, you're there are a couple of those. Warehouse. You're definitely going to the warehouse for this one. <laughs> oh yeah, well I think we'll do most of them at the warehouse. Usually on these weekends when we do like a Saturday and Sunday bookended, we'll do like five of them at the warehouse and then five of them at Brian's house just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, there were a couple of like location ones we were trying to get together, some like big episodes, but all of those just fell through. They just kind of fell apart uh, with, you know, we weren't able to get the people and the schedule squared away and stuff like that. So that was kind of a hassle. That would have been like one of them would have been probably our our, our biggest uh, episode yet, like the most bombastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still on the table. But uh, just not for this next batch. So we're still trying to get that squared away. Uh, Squid yeah. in the chat room says, uh, "How do you guys come up with with modern rogue ideas? Where, where's your brain trust at? You just, just figuring stuff out, looking on the internet." <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, uh, <laughs> we have okay. So uh, it, it goes back to like hacking the system, right? And so uh, uh, for those of you watching that don't know, uh, Brian Brushwood and I had a television show. He was the host. I was his uh, sidekick, sidekick, basically. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was also uh, like a segment producer, so I ended up doing a lot of research on the show. And it just comes from like books and ideas and internet and stuff like that, just scavenging. And I put together this huge document with all of these ideas for stuff that we could do on the Modern Rogue. That's our web series on YouTube. It's uh, And Hacking the System was our TV show on National Geographic. I guess I should... Tell people that, not assume that they know. Available uh, on Netflix now. Available on Netflix right now, yeah. Um, and uh, it's all like a, we pitched it as evil MacGyver. It's like uh, we we do stuff like here's how you cook a steak with thermite. Uh, here's how to make a, a, a prison spear. Uh, here's how to do a SQL injection or, excuse me, SQL injection uh, for those of you <laughs> who pronounce it that way. Um, and so we do a lot of that stuff, um, but I, I compiled this huge document, and for the television show, only a tiny, tiny bit of it got used. And so I'm always adding to it and, and everything. And Brian said, oh, I'll put that in the document. And he was like, I don't even know where the document is. He's like, I don't <laughs> – he, he just hasn't seen the document in like two years. That, that I'm like – well, it's yeah. it's there. That's it's a, still there for you to add things, but it's got just like, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas with links and stuff like that. And so, um, so yeah, uh, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know if Brian knows what we're shooting this weekend. I don't. <laughs> he, he might not even. I don't know if he does or not. Um, but which is fine. It's it's cool because uh, we were at first we were trying to uh, like. You know, we were trying to go back and forth, and I was like, hey, how about this? How about this? Okay, well, what about this? Mm, no, maybe not this. This one? All right, let's do it this way. You know, a lot of back and forth and trying to get the schedule. Now I've learned that it's, everyone, we are shooting these episodes on this Saturday and this Sunday. <laughs> okay? So, so how much of it is scripted? I mean, how much of it is actually, like, 
Oh, none of it. It's all uh, it's all off the cuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, what we do is I I have a document that I send out to uh, uh, to the team uh, to everybody to take a look at. I think uh, 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 Brant and I. I, I, I put together the, the document. It's like, here's the idea. Here's a rough outline, usually like four steps with like two or three words each, like <laughs> banter. Uh, talk about the history of uh, SQL and hacking. Talk about how it works. Show people how it works. The end. <laughs> and, and then it's like, here's a couple of links for information. And so I'll send out a document with all of those and saying, here's where we're filming, if we have a guest and stuff like that. Uh, and then we show up and it's like, okay, let's do it. And then as we do it, uh, Brian works his magic and will re often reframe the episode to make it more exciting, to make it more professional, uh, to hone it and everything. Cause he's, you know, he's got a good instinct and experience, uh, for that. And so a lot of times the uh, episode will evolve uh, while we're uh, while we're talking about it and while we're there shooting it. And uh, and it always ends up being better. And sometimes it's like, oh, this actually isn't going to work, you know. Um, and so, yeah, it's we've got this uh, long document and I'll pull from those. And a lot of times I'll see which ones are actually legitimate because some of them are ones that I've heard about, like a rumor or something like that, like. Oh, I heard that this works. I got to find out. So I'll have to dig into it. And I mean, I've got like a stack. See those books right there. That's like <laughs> my latest haul. Survival hacks, a guide to improvised weaponry, 100 deadly skills, you know, stuff like that. Advanced bushcraft. And then I've got like a bunch more over there. And then like a big shelf of books in the living room. So I'll, I'll have to do like... You know, I've, I've started to get better about testing stuff to make sure that it works out so it don't we don't waste anybody's time when we get in there. Um, I'm sorry, Squid. You just asked for ideas, and I told you, you know, you asked what time it was, and I said, here's how you make a clock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll hey, stop. Amos, uh, is your life nearly as exciting as Jason's? Uh, no. No. Uh, I Man, uh, hmm. I do have some ideas, though, but we'll have to wait until later for that. Uh, so this week, I, I I just I was edited a bunch of podcasts and started actually lo looking at way different. I, I changed my entire flow on how I edit this podcast, and that's one of the reasons why the last two episodes haven't been released yet. Combine that along with um, the fact that I hit my my data cap on Sunday night when I was about ready to upload the the episodes. <laughs> so we, 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 went, we went down to a 10 megabit per second uh, uh, speed. Oh, oh my god! From from, <laughs> from from my gigabit internet, and uh, it, it's not. You can't upload to YouTube on 10 megabits per second. It's it's uh, not it's going to work. Clip, maybe. <laughs> it's not 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 it not three and a half hours worth of uh, uh, 720p video content. Oh my god. So yeah, uh, so I had to wait. I, I expected to go over. I expected to have to buy a couple extra buckets of data, and it it did that like two days left. I'm not I'm not not I'm not spending a bunch of extra money for two days. The the internet can wait. And then of course I got tired yeah. with work stuff, working from home this week. Right. Um, I go back to work on Tuesday, like Tuesdays when my medical leave ends and I go back to work. I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I did, however, reset the spring in my nine mil today. So just in oh, case, there. just in case it gets really bad, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my, uh yeah. cause I, I keep my nine mil by my bed and, and I, I wanted to release the spring just for the cycle. And as I was doing it, uh, you know, pulling the bullets out and stacking them back in, I was sitting thinking, man. How odd is it that I think of this on the same day I realize I have to be at work in four days? <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say I'm going to take it to work because that would be very, very bad and violation of federal law, actually. Um, but, you know, if, if I need to stop by the firing range on the way home after the Tuesday, I'll, I'll have it ready. It'll be ready to go. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I live in the most boring town on the planet. Yes. Alamogordo, New Mexico. Yes. It's the most boring town ever, except except for when, except for Atari except, games are buried there. Well, not anymore. They dug those up. <laughs> oh yeah, that's they, right. That's they, where that's where they were buried, yeah, right? All the, all the yeah, games. But the they East took they dug them all up and took it away. So they don't even have that anymore. <laughs> 
The town was yes. too boring for E.T. <laughs> Except for when they're filming movies here. That's like the only interesting thing that happens here. And yeah, what was what was the last one that uh, was filmed there? Well, the the they last know. like the last like big name movie that was here was Transformers. Uh, I think it was Revenge of the Fallen. Okay. Okay. Uh, was filmed here. Okay. Uh, there was a couple of the Transformers movies here, but you know, a lot of times it's kind of like you know, more like indie films and stuff like that. Well, there's a there's a big movie being filmed here right now, and I just found out about that this week. It's a movie called Horse Soldiers, and it's about like right after 9-11 when we sent a bunch of spec op dudes over to Afghanistan to start looking into like getting rid of the Taliban and shit like that. Right, right. That's what this is about. Well, I was like, all right, this sounds kind of, you know, like one of those indie films or whatever. No, this has Chris Hemsworth, Michael Pena, uh, Michael Shannon, like a whole bunch of big name people. Do, are they, they, do, they, do they play the horses? <laughs> Actually, that's unconfirmed. I know, I know. Chris Hemsworth plays a character called Mitch, but most of the rest of the cast, like that, there's. I, I looked this up on IMDb. Most of them don't have names next to them, so I'm expecting like horse number one, horse number two. So I mean, you know, we'll, or we'll maybe maybe it's like a secret, like My Little Pony movie, where <laughs> like Chris Hemsworth and Michael Pena, they're all bronies going what? to war. Interesting that you say that. Michael Pena actually did a voice on the My Little Pony movie. How so do I you know, know that? You that exactly. <laughs> Why would I know that? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I only know it because I I did some IMDb research. Uh, ah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The IMDb yeah. rabbit hole. checks out. Uh -huh. Sure. Uh -huh. yeah. Seems... yeah. Well, okay. We'll go with that. <laughs> Fine. Uh -huh. um, so... It's a perfect place for me to throw out a, a name of a pony. To like go ahead and play the part, but I can't even. I don't even know the names of the. Ponies, oh yeah, so. that, that's that's a likely story now. Pokey <laughs> Puss. Um, that was the uh, uh, crossover with the Beastie Boys, right? Sparkle Motion, yeah, it's a big it's a big Beastie Boys fan. Uh, uh, Shub Niggerath. Um, <laughs> oh wow! And Dave. I mean, that's Dave. A, that's a name you don't want to say too slowly. I don't know how I. <laughs> That's the uh, the black goat of the woods, <laughs> the goat of a thousand young. Sorry, it's a Lovecraft nerd. So, oh man! But speaking of movies, Jason, you were in a film earlier this year. I was. I did some research in it, and I, like I said, I was researching some things on IMDb, and I saw that you were in a short film in 2016. Oh, uh, alarm! Alarm! Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, my my friend Will directed that, uh, wrote and directed it, uh, and it was fun. He asked uh, uh, me and Allison, uh, my wife, uh, to be in it, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was a good time. Um, and yeah, you can find it online. Uh, it's on Vimeo, uh, and he uh, uh, he was just like, "Hey, uh, uh, you guys play a convincing couple, so come be <laughs> in." Uh, in my short film and we happily agreed and had a great time. It only took one day and yeah, it was super laid back and a really efficient set. It was cool. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Now <clears throat> I also did, heard they, that did you... they shoot that in Alamogordo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, actually I play a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that's, that seems to be popular around here. Movies with horses. You, um, you would know. So, so you're a writer. Everybody knows that you're a writer. Uh, Black Coat Recycle cool. Club is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't think everybody did. I was like, they do. Awesome. Well, most of our viewers are are Diamond Club. Everybody in Diamond Club. I mean, come on. Everybody. Everybody's read Black Goat Motorcycle Club, right? Oh, bullshit. <laughs> um, exactly. I'm, it's on I'm, my. I'm trying to find a copy of my own book. And I'm like, I know it's over there somewhere. <laughs> Available on Amazon. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. The <laughs> Black Goat Motorcycle Club. That's that's my novel. It's uh, my novel that made a lot of my friends go. Who are you? They don't know if we're friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a this is a, a horror book, right? Yes. Like, motor motorcycle horror. Is that an established genre, or or are you a trailblazer with the genre? Oh, well, <laughs> or, or, or are you just putting your dreams on paper? I mean, let's. Uh, 
it's uh it's autobiographical uh i know it's a uh, okay so it's it's a uh, there there have been like just a handful of biker horror uh movies there are actually several novels uh there are a couple more out there and the names are escaping me right right now um but yeah it's uh uh i want to tell you what movie uh that i that uh is that a lot of people will think of if you're a fan of b movies but it gives away a twist <laughs> in the book uh, if I if I tell you, um, but uh, there's a lot of like yeah, biker exploitation was like a big thing in like the '60s and '70s, right? With like, you know, all sorts of Hell's Angels movies and stuff like that. And a couple of those had horror elements. There's one of them where it's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically Bigfoot versus bikers. Now that's that's not one of them that gives away mine, but uh, yeah, uh, I would see this. Yeah. I yeah, I just found out about it. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't think it's related at all to a different Bigfoot movie. Cause like Bigfoot was like huge in the seventies, like it was like a big deal. I'm serious. It was crazy. Uh, but there was a Bigfoot movie and the tagline, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like Bigfoot will mate with anything. And I was like, <laughs> I have to see this, <laughs> but I haven't seen it yet. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's. It's a it's a horror novel that uh, starts off with a bunch of bikers invading a. Uh, I'm still referring to it as though you can see it sitting over here next to me. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, bikers invading a small hospital in rural Arizona, and uh, that uh, and then it gets really weird and dangerous. <laughs> so it, then it really turns into a horror movie. But it, it's uh, it's very action oriented. The the whole thrust of the book is in its pace i think there are a couple of moments when it really slows down and gets creepy but yeah it's a, it's a pretty slam bang action packed horror novel nice right yeah i look forward to reading that that's um that's definitely on my to read list hopefully i'll I do it this year <laughs> i hope you like it uh right now uh as you guys probably know i um i'm doing uh like a, a 20 minute segment at a time for free on iTunes. If you search for the Black Goat Motorcycle Club, it's just me narrating the book in order. And I think we're on like episode 12 or 13 and still a ways to go. But that comes out, uh, it's on, you can do it on iTunes and I think it's on, uh, it's on SoundCloud as well. And you can check it out there. Now, the important question about that, is it scripted? Or you it is. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just, uh, just he, he just going it. twenty minutes by memory, just randomly, you know. Hey, you know, here's here's twenty minutes that I kind of remember writing at one time. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, okay. What was it? There was like, uh, okay, yeah. There's this dude who's on a bike. Or I don't remember his name. Is uh, we'll just call him Charlie. Um, Charlie's on this bike, right? And he's like, he just shoots this dude, and it's like blood. And it was crazy. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's something like that. That's what the podcast is like. Yeah, yeah we, we had Tay Allen on our show last week, and yep. she said she does some work with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I um, I was recording, and this had to take a back burner for various other things, one of which was Modern Rogue building Steam. Uh, but uh, I had Tay uh, – I was recording a, a, a podcast that uh, – was its own story, but would work in conjunction with the Black Goat Motorcycle Club, hmm. uh, set in the same universe, uh, and refers to events that happen in there. But they, it's like its own standalone story, but it also uh, hints at stuff in the novel. So you don't have to; you can experience them both separately, mm -hmm. uh, but they they serve to strengthen each other if you've experienced gotcha. both. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Tay came in and she, uh, yeah, she did some, uh, some voice work for me. Uh, and it's, I've had to put it on the back burner. Hopefully I'll be able to get to it, uh, you know, sometime in the near future. Uh, but, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done because I, I wrote like seven episodes and, uh, I had 43 speaking parts. Oh my gosh. That's ambitious. That was stupid. <laughs> it was stupid. And I started to realize it pretty quick because it's like, especially when you're not able to pay people, you're going to have a hard time finding 43 people who are good 
or just a couple of really talented voice work actors. Right. Right. And so it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to take another approach to it and have to rewrite it and strip some stuff out of there. But yeah, Tay came in and uh, did some voices for me. I actually met Tay at uh, a night attack party, the South by so South by so wasted mm -hmm. uh, at South by Southwest uh, a couple of years ago. That that's a, what a coincidence. That's where Amos and I met Tay. Uh, oh, no kidding. Yeah. Two years ago at South by so wasted is where we met her. Really? Well, and... Yeah, I, I suppose you can see that. <laughs> yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean that that's where we that's it, where it, we met her in person. Yeah, it, it was it was a meeting of uh of hey, how you doing? Um Well sure, sure. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and in in fact, Jason, I you, you probably don't remember us, but last year nope. at South by I'm just kidding, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah you uh, you're at the uh the brew exchange or whatever it was called. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brew Exchange, and then we went around the corner to the... Um, Steampunk. Uh, yes, the Steampunk. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And that's that's where I introduced Trevor, our bartender on the Modern Rogue, to Brian. And we started talking about shooting there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, oh, okay. Perfect. All the pieces yeah. are falling all, together. All comes together here on the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> 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 no, but so before we leave the topic of you being a writer uh, i want to ask you about 200 hours oh yeah oh. yeah um oh that's your question <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, so i've got a question about uh, about hours. the name murphy uh, i got a question about the name murphy <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so 200 hours is a um a screenplay i wrote and i had uh, worked on it with some producers uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, we weren't a, uh, actually able to get it made. And uh, one of those producers got it into the hands of an actress, uh, uh, Bria Grant, uh, whom you may have heard of. Uh, Bria got it into the hands of a director uh, named Philip Guzman, and uh, he's uh, directed uh, several films, um, and he really liked it, and that was... March, I think, early March. Uh, so uh, his uh, the uh, he he him and a, a different producer bought the script from me, but then they kept me involved with rewrites and stuff like that. Uh, they bought it in March. Uh, it went into production in June, like late June, I think. And so it was like they moved on it quick but it's a feature length horror film <clears throat> of course cuz my thing's horror and um yeah it's they're doing uh, effects work right now so we've got uh, uh, an effects team uh, a couple of different effects teams working on it doing uh, some some post work and they're getting the music locked in place and stuff like that so yeah super exciting uh you will most likely be seeing it this year uh Anything can happen when it comes to a movie. So, you know, you, you could see it like super soon. You could see it really soon, or it, you know, could get bought and put on a shelf somewhere. Who knows? You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to say you will see it this, you know, in May or whatever. But yeah, yeah it should be coming. Uh, should be coming really soon. Uh, sometime in 2017, I would think. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Super looking forward to seeing that. Uh, yeah. So, Amos. Uh, did you do some geeky things this week? Uh, so we're going back to the show. Got it. Um, hey. Uh... <laughs> Check in the boxes. Um, man, I picked up American Truck Simulator. Yeah. I've been, uh, 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 it, it's, a, it's a game where you drive a semi across California, Nevada, and Arizona. And it sounds, boring. It sounds yeah. completely retarded, and it is, but it's very relaxing, especially for people like me that like to drive. Just hop now, on there and and just cruise along. It, it's it's like mindless, just it's it's brain dumping time. It's just letting the letting the day end and sitting there in, in front of the computer just driving now, and. One of those like when you're in the the discount bin at Walmart and it's like two dollars and fifty cents PC version. Funny, yeah, funny. Sho shovelware is what they call that. Yes. But funny you yes. should say that because I actually got it on a Steam sale for like seven bucks or something like that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> when, when you're when you're playing it, do you get to go to like truck stops and get uh, you know from uh, like lot lizards and I, stuff like that? I, I think that's a I think that's a planned expansion. 
Um, r- right now, yeah. right now they're they're just struggling with DLC. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. they're, they're, they're getting yes. uh, what the kids call it DLC. <laughs> <laughs> Right now they're just figuring out the fatigue meter, so you know you know the meth is coming soon because they got the fatigue yeah. meter done. So, <laughs> okay, you're talking me into this game. I'm uh, I'm liking it. I like where it's going. Um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of where we're at with that. But yeah, it's just mindless, uh, mind numbing, and mindless uh, gameplay. It's just fun. So, so the biggest thing that I did this week was I talked one of my coworkers into watching Black Mirror. I've been hyping this show. It's such it's the greatest show. If you haven't watched Black Mirror, it's genius. Please. please. It's genius. Yeah. And I was expecting him to watch maybe an episode or two and we could talk about them as he's watching them kind of, you know, the next day at work we'll have like a 10 minute discussion or something about that. Yeah. No. This dude binge watched the entire Black Mirror library in <laughs> one night. Speaking of meth. <laughs> wow. That's oh, shit, dude. Like, I don't even know where to start a conversation about this. Like, that. How about that pig, huh? Like, so, oh my God. This is my favorite thing about Black Mirror. And, and, and I, I understand each episode is like its own little thing, and there, there's a, a conspiracy theory or just a random theory that they're all interlinked and stuff like that. But my favorite thing about sure. Black Mirror. Is that the barrier to entry, that first episode, if you can't make it for, through that first episode, you don't belong in the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, you don't deserve to see like the that rest first of them. One is is just that the, like, that's the big one, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's brutal. Like, that is but, brutal. But if you can make it first through that first one and you understand the concept of it and you have you can you can get the, the meta information out of that, you know, the whole, yeah. you know, she was already blah, blah, blah. Um, if you can make it through that first one, the rest of it is just candy. It's just amazing all the way through. But if you can't make it through the first one, you're there's you have no business in the series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that's that's the trial by fire, right? Yeah. I mean, but God, you watch every episode like just binge watch it like that. How, did he need therapy afterwards? <laughs> did he like take all of his technology and put it into a flaming barrel and then like move up into the mountains? I'm thinking that's what I would have done. I'm thinking one, if you try to if you if you watch all of them like that, you, you're not taking the time to process each individual episode. So a lot of the depth of it you're, is being lost. But yeah, that's you. You yeah, can't. So you, either either he had information overload, and and he, he just he was lost in the in the you know the mountain of this, or his brain was fried and he threw everything away. And because it, when I asked him about about it, he was just like, "Uh, yeah, man, uh, it's a pretty good show. I like what? It. See? It's pretty good. Oh, See, <laughs> you did it wrong. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Charlie Brooker, and I know this word gets thrown around a lot, but Charlie Brooker is a damn genius. <laughs> yeah. He really is. And so, yeah, it's okay. No, no, no. unacceptable. There, there's, yeah, there is definitely fun. something glossed over if, if that's your opinion, because you're either like, no, that show is complete crap, and I'm never watching it again because you're just not on that level, yeah. or you actually have to like digest each episode. And what I love about the yeah. show. That, that it's an hour long, you watch it for one hour, but you're going to talk about it for like six hours. Mm. That's yeah. what I mean. it, it really is the most successful torchbearer of the original Twilight Zone since Rod Serling. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, I said that from the first episode I watched. By, I like, by the way, as, as an adult going back and watching Twilight Zone episodes, completely different experience than when I was little and watching them the first time. Like it, yeah. it, it is a whole yeah. new show. It's completely yeah. different. I I'm of the opinion that Twilight Zone might be the greatest television show ever. Mm. Like full stop. Yeah. That's me. I I vacillate on that um, because Simpsons, Adventure Time. Batman the animated series, Firefly. There's a lot of it's a lot of good competition, right? Yeah. But Twilight Zone, I always come back to that one. Yeah, especially yeah. especially in this, in this context. Like when you when you talk about uh cognitive shows, when you talk about shows that, that really can grab your 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 yeah. thought process and yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and definitely the original series. Like the one like the 80s 90s one that, like, that was decent. That was that was okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. The original one was yeah, that was the that was the hard hitting like sci-fi make you think 
I, really I, good stuff. I turned yeah. forty. I turned forty in a couple months, and I'm still having like the occasional nightmare about that big ass eyeball and that little baby. Like these, these, <laughs> these are, you know, these are things that are just lo- they're not leaving my head ever from that show when I watched it like de- literally decades ago. Yeah, I want to sit down and do like just a full rewatch of like all six, five or six seasons. Just watch every episode. But we are living in an unprecedented golden age of television. And so who has time for that? You know, way too much content. Way too much. Yeah. 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 It's like I still haven't watched Mr. Robot. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. Yep. Nope. Exactly. Like, uh, uh, speaking of watching things, Amos, did you watch a TED Talk this week? I did. I did. And it starts with this button right here. Um, I watched Mandy Lynn C- Catron. See, I can't even get the easy ones right now. Uh, <laughs> Mandy Lynn Catron, A Better Way to Talk About Love. And it sounds sappy. It is sappy. It's 15 minutes, and I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Uh, it bas- the, the basis of it is that uh, we use words like falling and um, uh, uh, crushes and all these negative words when we're referring to love in just our hmm. normal vernacular. And just changing those words around paints a completely different story. And uh, she, she posits that it may actually change our outlook on it and that uh, how we respond to relationships and when they fail and when they succeed could be drastically changed if we just change the vernacular around the the concept of love. So instead of falling in love, we should be like waterboarded with love. Uh, you you kind of went the, the the other way, but I see where you're going. <laughs> I would say like my ladder of my love. Genitals are lacerated with your love. <laughs> well, that that's, <gasps> that that that's just a normal Friday night, though. So uh... <laughs> whatever you're into, man, hey. I'm uh, I'm not one to judge. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's like midday Tuesday. Like what? What's um, happening? No, but she she talks about uh, uh jumping into love instead of falling into love. Uh, uh, you know, see. just just turning it around so it's not something that accidentally happens. It's something that we're proactively taking a part in, it's, and so she thinks that the way the, the because of the word choice that we use for you know the cliches like falling in love that puts a negative spin on the emotion of love. Like maybe that's responsible for the divorce rate, no, or no, like no, what no, no, she no, actually no no no. It, it's more of a you you think in thoughts or you think in words and you use words to manifest your thoughts. There's a direct correlation between how you think and how you speak. And she posits that she she gives a gives the uh, the example of a relationship that she went through that when it fell apart, it really hurt. And then she basically said, "Well, that must have that validates the relationship because I'm having all these negative emotions, you know, all this sadness and everything else about the relationship." And she de- deconstructs that in in a um, in a, a language uh, type of way. I think that, she is she is she a linguist? Did she have some research that she presented to uh, back this up, or was this just somebody with some wacky ideas about words? Um, she's a writer and a grammar teacher, I believe. So no science. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know about this one, man. That's that that's like. Uh, I, I think she just needs a therapist. I think she just needs someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. 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 We don't have to change English colloquialisms because you can't find a boyfriend, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn well, it, Mandy. And, and, and this is a perfect reason for you to go watch it yourself and get your own opinions about it. <laughs> How about Anthony Goldblum? Finally, one that you spit out there that I can actually say. The jobs yeah, we'll so- lose to machines and the ones we won't. So typically, Jason, I'll, I will choose my TED Talks based on the the name of the the person presenting it, because he, he usually pre- he introduces the TED Talks typically, and I try to find something he cannot pronounce. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. I thought I was like, well, if that's your method, do you just like search <laughs> Ninja Fire McBadass <laughs> TED Talks? Because that's the one I would search that's for. But all, 
I understand your methodology now. I am searching that for next week's episode. <laughs> no, so Anthony Goldblum, the, the reason I chose this one is because it was five minutes long. Because uh, I kind of did this last minute. Oh, of course. Uh, no, he, he talks about the jobs we'll lose to machines and the ones we won't. And he was just basically talking about how computers are taking over jobs and people are freaking out about it. And I think the point of his talk was to uh, like calm people down, like give them some some hope that you know not all the jobs are going away. The point he was making was that computers are only good at frequent high volume jobs, so like you know uh, you know bulk task type things. But only humans are good at novel situations. So like, uh, <laughs> we're fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Carry on. Uh, Robots. Many, Go uh, ahead. <laughs> anyway, so he uh, he was saying that humans are good at novel situations. So creativity type thing, problem solving. That's what humans are good at. So those jobs are never going to go away. So you know, marketing strategies and and you know all the uh, you know artistic type stuff, right? And he was trying to to. Uh, calm our fears basically about computers aren't going to take everything um i'm sorry uh mo the people that are worried about losing their jobs are the unskilled workers you know the uh you know college students that need a job uh people that uh you know they couldn't afford college so they you know they go work in a factory or well, people that just enjoy uh pe people you know, pe people like you and me Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I am of the opinion that yes, that this is a very real problem because we already have, uh, you know, I, I'm of the opinion that the United States uh, can do better, but chooses not to, uh, as far as a lot of things. And I think employment is one of those things. And if, uh, if we sank a bit more uh, investment, uh, uh, and you know, whether it's from the government or private organizations or something like that. There are private organizations that do that, but I think we need something a little bit more widespread and broader, not like, uh, not necessarily like uh, Roosevelt in World War II with the, uh, the, the Workforce Initiative. I can't remember what it's called right now. It's an acronym. Anyway, um, I think we need to retrain. I think we need to, like, a, a concerted effort to, uh, to retrain people who have been phased out of the workforce or, uh, or are, you know, um, aged out of the workforce or something like that uh, uh, because it's uh, it's ridiculous for me to think that oh uh, guess what uh, technology has made you obsolete and especially now you are no longer a, a, a you're no longer of use to us you're no longer a valuable member of society so uh, Here's your park bench that you can sleep on now. It, that's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. that's crazy to me. So you know, it's like, um, let's retrain these people so that they can fix those robots that have automated uh, the jobs that they took, or 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 something like that. You know, they're still they're always going to be. It's like the jobs aren't going away. It's just they're turning into something else. You know, it's like right. Uh, you know, you're you're wanting to uh, put labels on all of these cans and that was your job and now a robot does it well um who uh who fixes the robot when it breaks you know and that kind of who thing puts, so they're who puts yeah. the labels on the robots right <laughs> right that yeah that kind um, of thing so I, I, I think this is just a continuation of the same problem we've had for a while uh at least in my experience we have a lot of people that are unskilled workers and under trained undervalued in, in effect and yeah. I, I, there's always the jobs that nobody wants to do and what we need to start doing is like remember when, when well at least in my experience when we were little the guys that went around in the back of the trash truck they didn't get paid squat like it was like the lowest form of employment now it's yeah now, now it's completely like the guys on the back of the trash truck are getting paid more than the cops you know yes. And, so yes. yeah so we yeah. need to figure out a better way to value the people that can do the work even if or especially if no one else wants to do that job yeah i uh, i'm of the opinion and this is a little bit socialist of me take that for you know what you will don't know anyone watching or your political affiliations um but uh yeah it's uh um you shouldn't be working a 40-hour work week and not be able to 
Sus- take care of your family. Sustain a, a standard, a, a minimal standard of living at least. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, now the guys, you know, the garbage guys, they actually make a pretty decent living, which great. That's awesome. You yeah, know, yeah. they do all right. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Before, before this turns into something, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> you know. And, and for the record, I'm a strict constitutionalist. I, I, that, that's, I don't, I don't go with the, uh, with the political, the, the brandings that they have. I just, I just believe in the constitution. I think we should just be following that. Ken, Ken's yeah. a little more it, difficult. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I don't really fall into a category. I'm. I'm more uh, left-leaning centrist. Maybe I don't know. I just think everybody should love each other and respect each other, and then. So, so Kent, you got that. some hot takes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hot take. Okay, so Jason, we started a new bit with Tay's episode last week. Okay. And we had mixed results because Tay is Tay. Uh, so I want to try it on <laughs> you to see how it goes this week. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> we have never met Tay before, so we don't know what that could possibly mean. So <laughs> anyway, so the way that this works, we call it hot takes. I'm going to throw out a topic to you. You have 10 seconds to respond. You basically give a raver, a rant, or a just whatever takes 10 seconds and then okay. we'll hear this sound a record scratch yep gotcha and then you stop talking you get another topic okay you see five topics and you just the it's called hot takes so give us your hot take on goats goats uh of the black variety uh i'm actually a fan i think goats are particularly creepy i like baby goats the ones that bounce around but other goats with the freaky eyes that bothers me especially like they when they walk on their hind legs goat men terrifying terrifying comic books am i right Comic books yeah i've been reading comic books since uh as far as i can remember uh i have maybe 30 of the long white boxes. You can see some of them right over there and graphic novels and everything. I think they're an important medium. And uh, contrary to popular belief, they are not dying. So everyone should go out and read one. Cubicle hell, am I right? (laughs) Oh, it's like you were reading my uh, my diary. Yes, Uh, people were, were not meant for that gray purgatory. Uh, The human mind or body was not meant to survive such a horrible thing. I get Fight Club. I get Office Space. I connect with it on a personal level. Brian Brushwood, am I right? You have been reading my diary. (laughs) Uh, I have uh, never met anyone so driven or dedicated uh, to um, uh, to humble figurines, like I have Brian. Uh, Brian is really, really passionate about those little porcelain figures, like a, a little kid holding a puppy and stuff like that. He's got like maybe five hundred of them. It's really weird, and it's like serial killer type stuff. The Ritual Misery Podcast. Am I right? Ritual Misery Podcast. These guys sent me. Uh, hey, here's the guest guide, Jason, uh, for you to be on this show. And I looked at it and I was like, I didn't know there was going to be homework (laughs) because it's just like this screen. And I was like, it was teetering really close to, yeah, I don't have time for this shit. (laughs) So, no, thank Yeah. All right. That went a lot better than Taze, actually. Uh, no, but on yeah. the, no, gonna, that's a really I'm gonna text point. her right now. It's like I did so much better than you. <laughs> Amos, we do. We definitely need a TLDR version of that. Uh, we have one. I sent an email out to a, a particular person. We we're trying to get on the show and said, hey, we record on this day at this time. Are you available on this date? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we uh, we have a few other things that we want to try to try to try to get in. Uh, we kind of run a little short on time, but you know, whatever. It's our show. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I want to bring up this week, I read a little introduction on the history of the ampersand this week. Um, I had absolutely no idea that it used to be a character of our alphabet. And what's it, happening right now? Is this is this a bit? What's what's no. going on? 
No, this, this is, is real. Amos. This is really happening. This is actual Amos random is shit that I encountered this week. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um. So yeah, it's uh. <laughs> Amazon.com. <laughs> ampersand. Ampersand. Continue. Uh, it used to be and per se and is how it got got its name. That's the short. That's the uh, the TLDR version. Say wait. Say that again. It, it was the character and, but they said by itself. So per se, and so at the end of the alphabet, it would be X Y Z and per se and. Okay, that's pretty fascinating. So it became ampersand. There you go. Done. Interesting. End of story. Okay. okay. <laughs> what you got, Kent? You, you, got, you got 10 <laughs> stories down here. <laughs> no, I think we've covered everything that uh, that I had. Um, okay. Jason, what, what do you have coming up in the future? Uh, in the future, I have, uh, let's see, we talked about, oh, uh, I've got a new book uh, that... Uh, can't really tell you much of anything about yet. Uh, come coming out uh, sometime this year, that, that's probably a, that's a good by sales pitch. summer twenty seventeen. That's a good sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the anyway, the ampersand. Forget about my stuff. Tell me more about <laughs> about symbols, you jackass. <laughs> no. um, uh, what do I have coming up? I, I'm going to be playing uh, probably some more Witcher three. I'm uh, gonna be doing that uh, <laughs> uh, on the Modern Rogue. Uh, yeah, every Friday. Got the new novel coming out, summer 2017. Uh, check out my website, JasonSMurphy.com. I update it sometimes on Twitter at Captain Murphy. But uh, I can't think of anything else. The movie 200 Hours. We covered it. We covered it. Perfect. And we will have links to all of your things in our show notes. So um, yeah, if you're listening to this. Audio only. Check out the show notes. If you're watching the video, uh, good luck because I mean the show notes are there, but the, they don't come out and pop out to you, so you get to read them. It's a little more effort than some people, some video viewers want to want to put forth. So, um, I, Jason, do you yeah, have Jason? Do you have, a, do you have a Patreon? Uh, I do. Yes. Thank you uh, for mentioning that. Uh, that totally slipped my mind. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Jason Murphy. That is for my uh, uh, podcast of uh, Black Goat Motorcycle Club. If you contribute, there are a couple of different levels, but uh, if you contribute to just the lowest level, the basic one, uh, you get uh, the uh, episodes a week early and you get access to my um, uh, audio uh, commentary, which is basically like an author's commentary, a director's commentary, if you will, of the uh, of the chapter, uh, where I sit there and say, oh, here's where I came up with this idea, and clearly I stole that from this movie, <laughs> and that kind of thing. So, Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah, th there will be a link in the show notes to that as well. Uh, Amos, I think we have one more thing left before we let Jason go. So, Jason, this whole whole episode, we've been farming the things that you've said and the conversations we've had to fill in a sheet that plugs everything together into a libs. Like uh, a Mad Lib? A little Mad Lib <laughs> action going on for you. Now, we understand that you are a modern rogue. That's exactly what you go with here. You're, you're, you're a one of the two modern rogues on the Modern Rogue YouTube channel. Um, rogues are a form of uh, miscreants and uh, people that have defiled the, the standard of, of, of society. <laughs> And yep. we, we wanted to look back at, at some of the history of some other people that have, uh, that you know, pirates, basically. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to, we, we brought up a little thing here. And. Uh-oh. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> the, the Idiot's Guide to Pirates? Oh, well, the original rogues. These are the old school rogues, this, not the that, modern one. This may be, yeah. This may See? be a, a, a verbatim excerpt I, from that book. Um, I could pull, I could pull books off of shelves like Tom Merritt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so Kent's gonna give a little, little snippet of what we came up with for the history of pirates and movies, since you, you like to do uh, some film stuff too. So, Kent, uh, can you uh, take right. it away? <laughs> All right, here we go. Even in the days of silent zombies, pirate movies were smash butterfly knives at the box rogue. That didn't make a lot of sense. Earning millions of horses. They enchanted kids and speaking parts alike, 
But in real life, pirates were as different from the ones on film as night and blood and fire. They were ruthless and cold-blooded who had no respect for law or Bigfoot. <laughs> Movies made pirates seem as lo lovable as teddy bikers. In the 1920s, in the dangerous silent film Ampersand, Douglas Fairbanks played the first swashbuckling backburner to ever roam the seven goats in search of small adventures and cubicles in distress. Today, Jughead carries on this weird tradition with his portrayal <laughs> of Gatawag Sparrow, a tongue-and-finger pirate buccaneer. Throughout the years, pirates have had a fucking way of lighting up the silver jackass. <laughs> So, uh, are you are you being treated for the stroke, <laughs> or are you just like just like going with it? Like, <laughs> Tourette's is a hell of a drug. All right. <laughs> some of our stories turn out really funny, and some of them tend to just, miss the mark. Just be it awkward. It always depends on how the the sheet gets filled and where they fall into the story. Because so. yeah, I I was I, I was sitting there thinking, oh man. Mad Libs, that's not really as fun as uh, they used to be, huh? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them, some of them are hilarious. I mean, you should go back into our catalog. Some of them are are are. <laughs> um, and, and and just just so you, a little behind the scenes thing, we don't actually look at the Mad Libs when we're doing the sheet. We just see the blanks and we just fill in the blanks. Ken starts from the top, I start from the bottom, and we just kind of fill it through. So we yeah. have we literally have no idea how it's going to turn out in the final story. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. That's so. cool. All right. Uh, uh, hey, Kent, uh, we, need to, we need to close this show out, man. Where can people find yeah. you at? Yeah, check me out on Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. I'm getting a little more active on there again, so check that out. Hopefully uh, there will be more, more stuff there soon. Um, people actually have started taking an interest in my beer reviews lately for some reason. Uh, if you want to read those, there's over 500 of them at ratebeer.com. Nice. Except username Del Noche. Uh, you can find me at Ethan Kane. I've actually recently started looking into changing my uh, my name on Twitter and other media platforms just because, cool. yeah, there, there's an actual Ethan Kane out there, and he's still pestering me about using his name. So. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I would just keep it out of spite at that point. Well, that, that's, that's actually why I still have my Twitter, because right after I got my Twitter, he reached out to me by DM. is like, hey, uh, my name's actually Ethan Kane. Can um <laughs> can, I, can I can I get that address? Um, and I'm I'm not gonna say what his his what his Twitter handle was really thinking, but um, you know it, it's it's not it hasn't gone away. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. That's pretty much the only 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 thing that I I look at or check besides emails. Uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. Next week on the Ritual Misery program, we have the one the only Christy Cates. Yes. Uh, Trying to get musician, her... musician, yes. right? Yes, Monday yes. music news here on DiamondClub.tv. So that's, that's gonna right. be a blast. I'm um, really looking forward to that. She was one of the participants for our streamathon for the New Year's, and had a great time with that. And I'm really looking forward to that. She was a huge help for that whole thing, actually. Oh hell yeah, yeah. Christy is amazing. I I love watching Monday music news. She's actually a wonderful musician. The first time I had ever heard her perform was during the New Year's Eve streamathon, yep. and she nailed it. Like, oh, my gosh, so good. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, she, she's awesome. I'm really looking forward to having her on next week. Um, and uh, we want to give a special thanks to you, Captain Murphy, for being on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, Thanks for having me. It's been a fun time. And to Kevin McLeod for providing the music. And uh, you can find all the stuff at richandmisery.com. For me, for Kent, for the, the Captain Murphy, this has been your Rich and Misery podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and I'll be damned if I still don't have the new Diamond Club sound loaded in my little uh, hitter button thing over here. <laughs> of course. <clears throat> oh, well. That wasn't, yeah. on, that wasn't on my list of shit to do today, Kent. Why didn't you remind me, man? That's not on my list of shit to do. He still uses paper.